This is the Holistic Medicine Podcast, Episode 1. Discovering the science and art of holistic medicine, looking at the unique individual and acknowledging the interconnectedness between mind, body, spirit and emotions in reaching optimal health and well-being. In Episode 1, I'm talking to Jesper Westmark, who has been a meditation teacher and a trauma therapist for 25 years. I'm also hosting a meditation retreat with Jesper Westmark at the Mindfulness Manor, you can get more information on mindfulnessmanner.com. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Holistic Medicine Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Julie Malke. Hello and welcome to Sjøvik. Welcome to the podcast. Before we really get started, for all of us to arrive here, um, Jesper has kindly offered to guide a meditation for us. So Jesper, if you would please start. Thank you, Julia, and uh, welcome here to Sjøvik. And um, yeah, like Julia just was saying, uh, I really would like us guys listening to this podcast uh, being uh, present. And the best way I know to do it is to do a meditation. So let's just do a short one before we go into all the stuff we have to talk about. Yeah. Okay. So just really uh, put yourself in a position where you can sit just a little while and just really focus at something here in the physical world. And from there, you just take a deep breath. You close your eyes and you put all of that attention in towards your body. So it's a kind of looking into the body, reaching deep, deep into your lower back, the way the stomach is moving a little bit, and the chest is doing the same, the shoulder, and then this cold air coming in the nose when you are inhaling. Warm air, exhaling. So, so just sit here and be the observer of that breath. Cold wind coming in. Shoulder, chest, stomach. Letting go again. Stomach, chest, shoulder, hot air. And the nose, exhaling. Letting go, fully present here with the body in this present moment. Filling out this body, this space, which is yours, to love. So put all of that love, attention in that space, which is your body right now. It means all the way out to the toe tip, lower legs, upper legs, hip, stomach, yeah, moving a little bit, chest, shoulder, upper arms, lower arms, fingers to the tips, the fingertip, staying present here with the hands, with the breath. So just here to focus with the hands, maybe to sensing some energy, fill out that space, you're taking your space. And then just take a couple of deep breaths. So relax the body, exhaling, breathe yourself into the space, which is the body, let go again, exhale, opening eyes, maybe focus at the same spot as you did before you came in, deeply, loving, taking the space, which is this body. 
Thank you. Thank you. That's a nice way to start. Thank you, huh? yes, but what a wonderful way to start a it podcast. Is. It is, yeah. yes. Um, and I think it's also a wonderful way to start this podcast, which is going to be um, where we're going to be talking about you and the work mm -hmm. that you're doing. Yeah. Because you are a meditation teacher. That's so, what I'm doing. Yeah. 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 But we'll talk more about this uh, mm. as we come deeper into the mm. podcast. Mm -hmm. um, first, I would like to set the setting. I will, I'll explain where we are. Mm -hmm. um, so I arrived here yesterday to your beautiful um, retreat mm -hmm. center in, uh, in the south of Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, we can look out at the lake. Yes. And at the moment, we're in the meditation uh, room, med meditation shala. Yes. Uh, we did a little sauna session yesterday, which was wonderful. Beautiful. Um, it was beautiful. Yeah. And uh, so today we will talk about the work that you're doing, that you've been doing the past 30 years mm -hmm. with meditation, mm -hmm. trauma therapy, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, tell this incredible story yeah. to the world. Yeah, let's do um, it. Yeah, so thank you for having me, Jesper. Oh, thank you for coming here, too. It's yeah. such a pleasure to it's have you. It's so nice to be here. Yeah. I was. Uh, I would like to first start you about your early, like talk about the early years. Mm -hmm. um, so, when did you first feel this spiritual calling, and uh, how was uh, the the early path leading you here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, meditation is something that I probably have been doing for my whole life. Uh, also, when I was a little kid. Mm. Um, and also to notice that that meditation is very natural for us to do. It's just sometimes we are doing something else. Mm. And we can talk about that because this is part of what and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because, like I'm saying, that when we know what meditation is, why don't we stay there? You see, this is the whole thing. Why don't we stay in mm. that present moment, that loving caring, uh, blissful state of mind that you can have in the body, but really choose something else. And uh, this is part of why I said that we probably do uh, have to have uh, training for this. Mm. <laughs> and this is what I do. This is the training yeah. for getting back to who you really are and has all the time there. So we need to discover why were we escaping in some stuff we are not and uh, losing ourselves in these terms? And this is, of course, part of the trauma. Mm. So to talk about that in my earlier life, it's like meditation has been part of my life for a very long time. Mm. And then at one point I had like... Um, uh, you could call it an awakening, uh, which was pretty early. I was only 17 years old. And um, uh, the best way to explain it was that um, I was really tired and I just wanted to take a nap. It was in the middle of the day. And I was just really, really exhausted. And um, at that point, I was not living by my parents anymore. But I was uh, having... I remember it was a Sunday and I was mm. home visiting them. And I went to my old um, old room where I was living when I was living with them. And I put myself at the bed and fall asleep. But in that certain moment where you sometimes wake up like mm. in a shock where you're like falling, I kind of woke up outside of my body. So it was like, wow. There my body is, it's sleeping, but I'm awake. Mm. And it was just not really Scary. awake. It was, <laughs> I was very awake. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I could see other stuff than was just there in that room. It was sort of opening up the space. The multidimensional worlds were there to look at. And, and at one point, it was very fucky there. Mm. And um, certainly... I could see there was a light, and this is through the roof. Or <laughs> I know it sounds a little watching the sleeping Jesper. <laughs> yes, yeah. watching the sleeping Jesper, and there, there's just this light, and I was so drawn towards it. And from there, it's like a landscape with mountains, wow. and at the very 
end like a tunnel of mountains is bright, bright sun. And I just needed to go into this. But in the same time, my mind were like going, this is too early. So it was just broadcasting that it's too early. Mm. It's too early because it, it's actually, I think that's what happens when we die. Okay. It seems like that. So it was that kind of light you yeah. experienced, you yeah. think? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, then I passed through that tunnel mm. towards the light. And after the light, space, darkness, mm. um, no movement, <laughs> no time, of course. Yeah. Just space itself. And, uh, and this darkness where there were, uh, there's no boundaries there. You see, that's, uh, we're all the same in that darkness. And from there, there was so much input. I could have stayed there for 200 years, but I could just have been <laughs> there for a second, you know, yeah. because it's out of time. It's yeah. really, it, it, you understand what now is, the present moments. This sounds like a, a, quite a violent experience for someone who's 17 years old. What it, did you make of this, Jesper? <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit violent. For most people, actually, quite a... Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, for me, it was like, I didn't know how to deal with it in the start, but then again, I got so much information mm. in that space that just being there, you know, like there, it was, there was so much information in that. Mm. So what happened was that um, at one point uh, I choose to come back to that body. So I was just, and that was just me going back to the body. And then afterward, there was some energy following. And it sounds a little bit like, imagine you put your ear on a train trail and you can hear it coming and then boom. Yeah. That's how uh, wow. violent it was to come yeah. back. And I remember it went through the, it, it was really massive here in my throat. So my throat was opening up a lot. Uh, the chakra here. Yeah. And... Um, so you felt... You really felt that energy. opening, a yeah. lot of energy. And a huge opening in my throat chakra and um, to someone who doesn't know the chakra system what what would that mean uh, to you this is the bridge between our body mm -hmm. and and the the more high uh, frequent layers of uh, invisible so consciousness consciousness in itself yeah. the, the thing that's looking out towards yeah. the eyes right now is actually what consciousness is, you know? So you opened the connection there. Yeah, I opened definitely yeah. the connection when very much open. Beautiful. And from there, I needed to deal with that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> like I said, it took me, it, it took me around, I would say, fifteen to twenty years to get a proper language for that. Wow. To learn how to speak it, and this is what I tap into all the time now. Mm. What I was. In, in in that present moment is has been open for me since, since. but it it took me a long time to understand what it was that were open to get a, a language for it. So this is and this is where it becomes a, it could be a little stressful sometimes yeah. because you will um, you will not be the same as the other seventeen year old <laughs> kids, but you will try to. So and of course I did the same. Mm. I tried to, but I also knew something has happened to me so i needed guidance, and i went with some people there was like 50 60 70 years at that time they mm. knew something of spiritual work and um, they helped me a lot to understand because they knew people who has been doing a lot of studies from these like early spiritual mm. um, openings so that helped me a lot because it, it was uh, wonderful that you already knew that this was a spiritual experience yes then so you could go and get in contact with the right people who could mm -hmm. point you in the right direction mm -hmm. yeah yeah but um, did you do that straight away yes actually i started already when i uh, was 18 yeah. i was at that school and it's uh, it was a it's a girl called Gerda Thurstedt. I yeah. believe she's still alive. That's a <laughs> girl, and uh, it's a Bronster Center. It was a beautiful place to go to in, in Jutland. That was yeah. the only place in Jutland I did for that kind of. And she, she's a doctor. She's a medical she's doctor. Also, as she's well. a medical doctor. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. same as you. So, so it's it. wonderful. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. But the the beautiful thing is that science um, and spirituality is definitely emerging because we see that we can explain many of these phenomena with signs, um, which is beautiful. It's beautiful, <laughs> yeah. yes. Um, but um, so then, did you start teaching straight away or did you have... <clears throat> no, it took me a while to get like a language yeah. for it. So yeah. I was able to teach because in the start, when if I was trying to explain it, people were saying, what is this guy saying? Yeah. Because it was yeah. still so multidimensional talk coming out of my mouth that... I understood it myself, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> what, but, uh, what can you say? <laughs> yeah, what can I say? And that, but that teaching was really nice. Mm. They gave me, but it didn't give me proper uh, way of talking because it was a very old language I yeah. was learned, and and it was very uh, hardcore school where I need to read a lot and to write a lot, and mm. it was just an old-fashioned way of doing it. Yeah. But then uh, <clears throat> I actually saw um, one of the first things Ed Catole ever did, and that oh. really helped me to get a language. Because, yeah. And then I followed him for a while, really early, yeah. when he was uh, just coming uh, in from the park. Yeah. <laughs> when he had his, <laughs> when uh, he had his awakening. Yeah, 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 he has his that awakening. Was that was early, all... wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was, he was not, yeah, I don't remember how old he was, but he was not... Hmm. Uh, that old either you know and so it was kind of uh, nice to see somebody uh, that had a language that's yeah. beautiful for it yeah. i mean he was really really good at putting yeah. the words into it and from there uh it really shaped my language from there so i could pronounce what is going on yeah. what is it? and i can recommend to anyone who doesn't know Eckhart Tolle. he's an incredible spiritual teacher and he uh, wrote a couple of beautiful books a new earth and the power of now. So if you haven't read those, they were actually my sort of initial spiritual books, and they really did a lot for me. So it is. yeah, I can we can recommend them can both of us. It. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and stillness speaks. It's stillness really, speaks. It's very, very good. Yeah. He, he he wrote some really nice books. Beautiful that guy. books. Beautiful yeah. books. Yeah. Um, but let's get back to you, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what were some of the early lessons that you that you learned on on this path and like in your early life? Yeah. So, so you see, there's this opening, mm -hmm. and I had with that opening a lot of communication is coming in, and um, and it's not the thing. Oh, it's gonna be less. No, it's not. It's <laughs> even you know opening up more and more. So I I got so much knowledge about my life when that happened. So I knew what to do at different states of aids in my life okay. and yeah, yeah so that's also part of it and um so i was told also to be connect really with people and have a very creative because the hands is important mm. for me to ground it and uh, so hairdressing for me was just perfect yeah <laughs> so i was there sitting close to people and working with art and that took me all over the world so there there was a little escape for me and yeah. a place where I could be that teenager and that grown-up guy and no still working with people talking with people yeah uh, still having all my spiritual practice on the side from 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 uh, from these guys at Bonstel but also all the shamans I met mm. at that time so I worked with uh, Blackfoot Indians, and I worked mm. with this, uh, the Samish people from the north. And and these were, were my practice uh, a long time together okay. with that uh, um, ph philosopher uh, yeah. uh, from, uh, from Bonster Center. It seems like a bit of a double life. On one side, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you are being a yes. creative, artistic uh, yes. hairdresser, and, yes. and you were really successful as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then on the other side with Indians and yes. shamans. Uh, yes. How did you combine that? Could you combine that? It, it was very easy for me. It was, it was quite easy for me uh, along the road because it was such a big need for me to uh, understand what happened. Mm. Because if I, if you, you have to understand, if I didn't understand that, there was no other life to live. Yeah. Okay. That's how it was. Yeah. So, 
So I needed so much to go into that stuff, so or else I could put my head right. I probably, uh, yeah, I don't know. Was that like you said that you need to know what you're not to know what you is? You uh, probably you can say that. Are? So it's yeah. also really a, <clears throat> a way to go into the matter. Mm. So, <clears throat> so you can't really go out of the matter again before you really went into it. Yeah. And from there, it was a really, really nice path. And also, there was a little escape towards that also. So, and for me, later in my life, being a trauma therapist and, you know, doing the meditation, it really helps me to know how it feels like when you really lost yourself. Mm. Really try to escape the most you can do. And, of course, that was a beautiful world, especially when I was uh, coming up and traveling the world and... Just partying with crazy people all the time. <laughs> crazy beautiful people. Crazy all beautiful the time. people all the time, and that was really funny. Yeah. So I, um, like I said, it went really fast, and you know, it, it was a lot to ah, uh, how should I put it to to lose myself in because that's quite easy, you mm. know. It's really easy because it was really funny. <laughs> so one lesson was how you lose yourself yes. and how you come back. Yes, yeah. and knowing and walk that path, you know, really lost myself yeah. totally in all kind of ways you can do that. <laughs> and, uh, and then coming back and getting, owning myself yeah. again, filling out this body. Because I remember at one point I looked at myself in the mirror and I couldn't, I, there was nobody. Mm. And then I got really scared. Yeah. There was nobody in, in here. So how did you come back when you lost yourself? This is probably something that people could uh, use. Yeah, to but know. for me, it, I, it was. <coughs> <laughs> I, um, I really um, had a bad trip at one point, okay. and I was just laying in my bed for three days and holding on to that ah. because I knew if I have just walked out of that bed, I would have jumped out of the window. Oui. Yeah, that's yeah. how far I took it out. Okay. So that was really far out. And from there I knew, okay, I can't do it anymore. I can't escape anymore. Mm. And, and what I was escaping was me, as I am yeah. today. Yeah. And of course, I was escaping not knowing what to do with all the sounds and all the <clears throat> spirits talking to me. Mm. And okay. There you can find some drugs in this area that really helps to lock that down, and it, it can yeah. really be done uh, proper. So but but it, it will it will only stand for a while, and then you need to do something else. You couldn't escape the noise any longer. No, no, no. no I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't escape the <coughs> the spirits calling me back and yeah. trying to get me back uh, to what the plan was, yeah. as I saw. Because you all with the time will have your free will. You see, you can do it and you can do not. And they will ask you, are you ready for this? And then it will happen. And, and then you, you, you're following your, your path. And this is so much about following your path. But I knew all the time that I had to lose myself completely. Yeah. But when you lost yourself completely, it, you're really lost. Yeah. It's like you, you, you don't know. It's like being in pitch dark. Mm. You don't know where to go. It's just you're really lost. And from there, coming up again and, and going back to who you are and mm. what the purpose is, you see, that's a tough, uh, it's a tough thing to do, but it, it gives so it's much. It's the most steep ascent, probably. Yes, yes, yes. But it seems like many people find themselves in this situation mm -hmm. and that's where you have the most to learn and, yes. and where you can really come up to, You're so right to about find that. your true purpose. It's so yeah. true. It's like in the uh, darkest and deepest yeah. Caves, yeah. this is where the biggest knowledge is. I think the Buddhists, they talk about it, that it's the initiation through suffering. Yes. Um, so yes. that was what happened. That's what happened. Yeah. I, I can sign that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, so then what happened uh, after that? Yeah, there was the next that, step on the path. Then, then there's uh, me coming back uh, to... Um, to who I am today. So okay. the first thing that needed to be taught to me was how do I actually choose which one to communicate with okay and for me to rise my energy again so I can stretch myself into these layers of 
uh, how should I put it, light beings that are in a high frequency. Yeah. Because that's what I need to do. Because you are sort of communicating with the spirits that yes. you can't sort of like, yeah. No, you're, yeah. If, it's like it's like if you have learned to ride a bicycle, you can't unlearn it. Yeah. And when this is open, <laughs> you can't unlearn it. It's just open. Yeah. So you just need to navigate in it. And the, <clears throat> so to have that um, knowledge about re, uh, lifting up your own energy. So I remember the first year I was just sitting like this the whole year because the energy was so low in my oh. body. And, and to just go, it was like a rocket going mm. up to the layers. And I was shaking like a rocket <laughs> going up to the layers. And you really need to know you want to do this. Yeah. Because I was shaking for a year. Sounds intense. It yes, was but, intense. Yeah. My energy was so low. <laughs> I lost myself <laughs> so completely. And it, it was nearly like a little seat opening oh. up and moving towards some really, really hardcore concrete. That's and, a and very that's, beautiful that's the, picture. That's a, and then coming up towards, mm -hmm. and then reaching up towards the light, and having that tree to grow up. Yeah. And this is how it felt like. Yeah. That's how it felt. Yeah. And going through that concrete. So you have to break little, open the yeah, concrete Yeah, have to break first. it open, yeah. yeah. You really want to, but yeah. you see, it's strong. These plants are strong, you know. Yeah. They will go to concrete. Strong plants. <laughs> strong yeah. plants, you know. Mm. They will do it. But, you know, it takes effort to do it. And mm. you really need to be, how should I put it? You really need to to be in it. You really want that. And because it's so easy to just escape again. But see, that that's the challenge, you know. When you first come back to you and there's no drugs to escape in and your the numbness is gone, mm. uh, it just knows it ways. It just wants to go there. I'm, I can't help sort of asking. I think like a lot of people who would, if you were suddenly connecting to these uh, spirit realms and you were hearing the spirits talk to you, I think many people would think they were going a little bit crazy. Of course, of course. So, um, but you already had heard that this was your path. They had communicated yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. But like, so if people have sort of these kind of experiences, yeah. How do you kind of like not end up in, in the mm. mental institution? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. And I'll, I'll put it that way. If I, if I haven't been told in, in that opening mm. that um, I need to do this by myself, I can't do it by, um, by other medicine than me. Mm. Uh, I've definitely gone to a, a mental hospital. Yeah. And, but I was told not to do that. I was yeah. told to do it by myself. You see, that's me. For other people, it will be different. Yeah, okay. Uh, for other people, I really tell them you need to go to that hospital to let them help you. And from there, you will have that guidance coming back to you. Mm -hmm. And there you can come back to your path. Uh, but maybe you need to rest a little bit. Yeah, okay. Just rest. Yeah. It can give you a little time to rest. But for me, I already have done that at that time because... I already took a lot of drugs, you know, <laughs> so I needed, to, yeah, <laughs> I needed to go in yeah. a different uh, yeah. direction. And so I was just really um, allowing my body just to clean itself yeah. by itself. Yeah. It's very interesting to talk to you about this. And obviously we're not going to get a, an answer today, but it's mm. sort of like racist questions about the mm. whole way we created our psychiatric um, <laughs> sort of you know you know how we treat psychiatric patients yes, so yes, yeah yes. that's for another podcast I that's think. another podcast let's, yeah but it's true yeah because yeah. some of them uh, just, uh you know are just having very very powerful spiritual yeah uh, discovering i would say and experiencing that and uh not knowing how and what to do with it yeah. yes yeah. this is uh, you know there could be like a place where you get in and talk to some people because they can be a little nuts when they're in that area. <laughs> yeah. I would say myself yeah. that, uh, wow, that's, that's difficult to navigate in that. It is. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, it's close to now I'm losing it. But this is where you need to allow yourself to lose it. Mm. 
You see, this is, and let the ego just want to hold on to what it knows, but you really need to let go instead yeah. and to not control anymore because they know. And, and then it's, there's so much about, if you hear noises, you need to uh, know that they have to be quiet. They cannot come and talk to you. You see, this, this is, this is, they, they, it's not allowed. So you're so the you one, say, this is the first, you say, go away. Yeah. And then you reach the highest level you can come into with your energy, and then you open up. Okay. So, so every time somebody will just go to you and talk to you, it will be walking on the street and suddenly a person is coming there and taking your arm and saying, oh, you should hear this. You don't want that. No. You see, you, you, you want to go to that meeting in that building and you have one manager <laughs> yeah. and that manager is the one who set up the meeting. So that's how it is with the that's how it for is. you. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I don't talk to a lot. Yeah. I talk to one, a manager. Yeah. And that manager is, is controlling what Probably I, a good what message for yeah. people who that's experience the way these kind of things. Do. And everybody yeah. else, you go away. You talk yeah. to them like this, go away. Go away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> go away. <laughs> so so I, I would like to come back to, um, when did you then start um teaching meditation when mm -hmm. uh, when mm -hmm. when did you found the meditation school because yes. you have a meditation school in Copenhagen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and um you see in the start I, I was so much in need of doing meditation mm -hmm. but there was also a thing with it and this is where it comes in I couldn't I was so afraid that I couldn't meditate if I was not holding another person oh. in the hand okay so I had like a couple of good friends and uh, we were just actually sitting in, um, we were like four guys. Yeah. And the four guys of us, we were just sitting like this, yeah. holding hands. How beautiful. Yeah, yeah. four guys. Yeah. And they were used to me sitting and shaking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, and yeah. they were, because I told them, you know, I'm so afraid because I, 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 I'm so far away mm. from who I am. I'm, I'm afraid to come back. Um, and you see, all, so all that shame and all that guilt and all that were also coming up at the yeah. same time. So just sitting, and that's actually where we started. Okay. Because four from there, four guys holding hands. Yes, meditating. four guys yeah. holding hands, <laughs> meditating, and and me shaking, yeah. <laughs> and and then I had really strong uh, um, spiritual awakening yeah. towards hold that process. Mm and guidelines and they were there for me they just wanted me to come back in what i'm doing today yeah and of course a lot of help came from that and they really helped me out yeah and then i got people training me to say this is the energy go for that so um, very very beautiful clarions and then there was some traumas in my system still mm -hmm. that I, i didn't have the knowledge that time how to release it yeah And then I was introduced to, um, you see, it's called um, trauma, uh, the trauma therapy. Yeah. The trauma uh, therapy. The yeah. trauma therapy, and there, I saw how powerful that was, because a lot of time I was sitting in a in a barrel. I couldn't go really through it, but mm. then I understood because there was. There's so many layers in the trauma. And and they're holding each other like a big web. Yeah. And if it's just very hard to do when you're sitting by yourself and don't have the knowledge to it. And this is why, like I'm saying, this is part of when we know what meditation is, why don't we stay there? Yeah. Because these webs are so strong, this subconsciousness where the trauma is, is gonna rule so much so, of what and how you're gonna live your life yeah so our traumas are in the subconscious we are not always aware of our no, traumas no, we're not is that aware how it is yeah yes yeah. It. Uh, you can put it that way if you know and you think that's it yeah it's it's not that <laughs> it's definitely not that okay <laughs> and it's all the time so if you know what it is you've seen it in the subconsciousness and it's not there controlling you oh, anymore yeah. And do we all have trauma in our subconsciousness? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. So you have to, your bloodline. Yeah. Uh, and you have all your ancestors uh, there. And the traumas building up is putting into you at the birth. Okay. 
Yeah, and so that's why some is saying that the, in the age of a tree, you will have around 250,000 drummers. Oi. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be a lot, yes. Yeah. But could some be of a you, lot. yeah, but you see, it's there to protect you. Yeah. It's protection. From what? From the ego wants to survive. So it just it's just programs taken with you towards your family lines, your bloodlines, mm. or people around you showing you how do you survive the best in this body. Okay. And this is why these bodies are so strong, has been surviving for so many years yeah. on this planet. And they are just there really to take care of you. Yeah. And the beautiful thing happens then when you are coming home and you're here most of the time, it means meditating, know who you are as consciousness, yeah. looking at your breath and knowing you're not these thoughts, these emotions, this energy, this body, but you are taking the space which is this body and loving it for mm. what it is. Stop fixing it, you see. And this is, so the trauma knows, wow, that person is here. Somebody is home. Yeah. And when that appears, the trauma will come up saying, this is wrapping the trauma stuff. Yeah. Because they, until they are just there in the subconsciousness, controlling from there, and there they actually are put into the light. So they have been seen. And when you see them, they are letting go because you're here. But they can't delete themselves before you are home. Yeah. So it's a bit like bubbles coming up through the water and you then suddenly up into the sun. Yes. It's evaporating. Evaporating, yeah. yeah. So that's how you release... Tra is that how you release the trauma? Yeah. Is that... Yeah. Yeah. It's there. So you have to understand, you don't like know what it is. You just see the output from it. Mm. You just see, this is what's going on in my life. I do it the same again and again. Yeah. And this is my, like my father and mother and then before them, yeah. you know, and maybe it's people you're close to. Yeah. yeah. Environment mm. where you have been taking a lot of knowledge from. But even not now, it's just really programmed, mm. putting into your body. And there it's just broadcasting. And there you can see, wow, this is what's going on. Let's just take a simple one. You're afraid of water. Let's say that. Yeah. Because that is a program. And uh, so I'm just afraid of that water. And it's like that all the time. I can't go near that water. And, but that program is, is pretty easy to go towards because it's, it's, not, it's not really right you know, and it's out of balance with uh, so many things. So it's easier to ripe and, and to yeah. uh, delete. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that what it is. You can see what it is yeah. and, and it's easier to go into. So yeah. these, these phobias are the easiest one to yeah. deal with. And then the, the structure of how family are put together and how it works, it's a little bit more tricky. Yeah. 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 But it's, it, it's definitely is as easy as the water um, phobia to delete yeah. or to balance, so to neutral. And I, I've been on your retreats and I've mm. seen how people are releasing trauma yes. when we're meditating. Yes. Um, and um, especially when you're playing these like powerful mm. music, mm. which is kind of like moving emotions yes, and it wakes them up. It, it wakes it seems like mm. it's waking up the trauma yeah, it is and and then i'm just wondering is this like years and years of therapy that you are just releasing there it is. Yeah. yes of course yeah. it is because it's it's to we, we can talk a lot and try to fix a lot mm. but as soon as we try to fix ourselves or somebody else we'll tell them that you're actually wrong yeah yeah <laughs> you need to be right and i know how to do it and the thing is, when we're talking about meditation, you have to notice that you're already right. You're already beautiful. You already love itself. And this is actually what we're going to put in uh, towards the trauma. So, yeah. And there it actually starts to release us. But as long as you tr think with the brain, you think you know what it is, you'll escape it. A lot of the time, a trauma has put like a firewall up. And that firewall <laughs> is, a, is a story about yeah. what you think what happened okay. so you can deal with it. And that's not really what happened. Yeah. 
And it's just to do that little thing. Do you remember what happened when you were one year old? And you see, you, you have no idea. Yeah. This is how far away we are with the thinking mind yeah. to understand what is a program and how to neutralize it. Yeah. Uh, because if you knew everything what happened when you were one, you can do it. But uh, it makes total sense in a way, yeah. yes, but right? Because if mm -hmm. you knew what these patterns were based on, and, mm -hmm. and then you probably would have fixed them long ago, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yes. I think this is also an important lesson that you're teaching us here, that to reach these uh, traumas, you need to meditate to reach this subconscious level. Exactly. Um, exactly. For them to come up. It's so yeah. true. I call it pre-meditation yeah. and then to be meditated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will you explain what that is? Yes. So, yeah. so <clears throat> in the pre-meditation state, it's we're doing meditation. Yeah. So it means we're looking at the breath, we are um, looking at the emotion, mm. we're looking at the energy, the body, uh, beautiful things. You can do yoga. Yeah. It's the warm-up because you do things. To put yourself opening up your chakra, yeah. moving uh, the energy, dancing, the music, and all that is uh, saunas, the heat, you yeah. know, cold, and going into these things. We're doing things. Yeah. And so the pre meditation where we do things is the warm up to where the meditation really starts. And to understand pre meditation, you picture yourself a mountain and a lake. Mm -hmm. All the pre-meditation will be done at the mountain. On the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where ego is. Okay. Ego wants to do stuff. Yeah. And it wants to reach that really... Yeah. <laughs> it wants to be enlightened, <laughs> yeah. right? It wants to be enlightened <laughs> yeah. at the very top. Look at me. Yeah. I'm the only one. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but up there we figure out, wow, that's cold. That is definitely <laughs> not where I want to go. Oh. But this is like we need to try to reach that one to see what it is. And it's beautiful. That's part of going into matter, mm. trying it out, and then getting the knowledge about it's not that. Uh, and where is it then? Yeah. And of course, it's at the very bottom of the lake. Oh, wow. This is where we figure out who and what we are. It's a little bit like the darkness I was talking about yeah. when I went to the light yeah. when I was 17 yeah. and went into the complete stillness, darkness, space itself, silence. nowhere to go, silence, yeah. out of time. It's also at the very bottom of that mm. lake. So what you want to do on that mountain, you want to navigate. And then I like the idea to have four satellites. There's a satellite called emotion. There's one called a fort. Mm. There's one called energy. And from there, you know where your physical body is on that. So there is the mapping. So this is what you teach when you teach meditation. Uh, you yeah. teach us how to be able to map out yes. and observe these yes. different emotions, thoughts, energy, sensations, right? Yes. Yeah. And because this is so important, without that, you don't have the mapping. You don't mm. know where you are on that mountain. Yeah. And then from there, it will be a uh, Google map thinking you are in China. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, driving to Sweden, yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And this is all about allowing. So, no, if I just were in China, it would be good. Yeah. You yeah, see? So, yeah. you don't want to do that. You want to see this is how it is. Yeah. You want to be in the present moment. Exactly. So, this is. is one of the things I'm all the time will say to myself is, I'm allowed to have it like this. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll wake up. Wow, I have it like this, but I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to have it like this. Yes. Mm. Also Feels this, really good. <laughs> also, this is good, you see? Yeah. And, 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 and really, if there's something there, wow, well, but also that, yes, mm. but, but then it's a knowledge like, but also that will pass mm. because it's physical. It moves. Yeah. This is what physical stuff does. And for me, physical is like energy, thoughts, and emotion in the physical body. And so it moves, and it moves all the time, especially when consciousness is here. It really puts the heat underneath the, the, the movement. You can see mm. that is the energy. This is uh, moving it then. And then to wake that energy, start it moving, and then we go to the bottom of that mountain, and this is where the lake is. Yeah. And from here, this is where meditation to be meditated. So to be meditated talks a lot about it's a surrendering mm. into 
who you really are. Okay. And going through that lake is, of course, going through all of what subconsciousness yes. is. This is where all the programs are. And when you slide down, and then that will decide how far are you able to go mm. deep, deep in that lake. And this is a very different teaching from, for example, where the, the Buddhists are teaching us just to focus on this one point of awareness. And like here you really open up to everything that there is, right? Yes. Yeah. This is all of who we are. Yeah. And this teaching is beautiful mm. because it's so much... Uh, when I see the religions, uh, especially the Buddhists, um, uh, they are making such a powerful premeditation that it's so easy to come to that lake mm. to sit there and to surrender towards it so mm. it has definitely done beautiful yeah. things but we yeah. need that next level now to We're jump going, into the lake yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to be brave <laughs> yeah. and really surrender into who that big fast yeah. lake And what you're gonna discover is there's nothing to hold on down there. It's just one deep space. And for the ego, that's quite scary because it wants to reach that top of that mountain mm. where it controls everything. But it's actually the opposite way to come back and to know. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, yes, but yeah. Um so you have been teaching meditation for 25 years, 30 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. You've been working with a trauma therapy mm -hmm. and then you have also been hosting these retreats for 25 years yes uh, so tell us a little bit about the Sjövik yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's Sjövik. where we are now that's where we are now yeah so Sjövik I actually knew that uh, when I was 17 years mm. old I knew I was to have this place Like I said, it was a little hard standing there being a hairdresser <laughs> yeah. and knowing <laughs> what I was to become. Yeah. And because I know that's just the way it is. Um, it was told to me and I was just to do it. Yeah. And uh, it was a little stressful, I would say, that <laughs> <laughs> standing there cutting hair. But then again, I knew. Yeah. So... It was just for me to go to suite and actually to sense into one or two or three places. Then I saw Sjövik and when I came here, there was just an old house. Yeah. There was nothing and you couldn't even see the lake. Oh. Uh, it was just one big forest. It was abandoned in the 60s and the house was still looking with furniture and everything from the 60s. And the house was falling down. <laughs> uh, no, a tree was falling down to the roof, and it was there was water inside of the house. More was, like a horror movie. Than it was more like a horror movie. And then I remember I came here to sleep, and there was mm. maps all, all over the place. So uh, I couldn't even not sleep <laughs> in the house. So that's how it started. Yeah. But I knew that was the place, and um, also what I could afford at that uh, time. Yeah. You yeah. see, because uh, that's how it was. But it was calling so much to me that lake. Yeah. And uh, it's so beautiful. And like I say, when I saw it, I knew, wow, this is, this is my graveyard. This is here I'm going to surrender to. And really, just not in my physical body. I want to be put out to that lake. But, but this is also a place for me to really surrender into what meditation is. Mm. And for me, that's so much to understanding about what is that. Yeah. What is that letting go? Yeah. In, and into surrendering to who I am to be awakened to the consciousness I am, the love itself. Yeah. And uh, because the ego is holding so much onto stuff, uh, matter, and so collective, and, and, and breaking that up and letting go into something else is, is a death process for me. So is that releasing the, the fear of death in a way? It that, definitely it yeah, is. Yeah, letting definitely, go of yeah. that. Yeah. You see, that's also a thing. Uh, after that, you see, you can't be afraid of death anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't kill something which is already dead. <laughs> you see. Yeah, that is hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard. Yeah. No, when you know what death is and trying it, and yeah. you're so close to it, it's like you know your consciousness. And of course, you really understand how important it is that you take care of, of your body and, mm. and, and loving it yeah. for what it is. And when you say this, that you have already died, it's because it's all these things you've been letting go of. That's not you. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's the dying part for me. Yeah. It's yeah. A, and then no, noticing that 
of course I have them still. I still yeah. have a body, still have emotions, yeah. thoughts, and energy. Yeah. But for me, it's more like um, it's more like I'm renting it from Mother Earth, <laughs> not really renting, you know, borrowing it. Yeah. Uh, so it's more like it's like this. Wow, I get to borrow this from you. Yeah. Uh, uh, all the physical, and I'm here. I'm I'm present with you. And you're giving loving. it back to Mother Earth ah, today. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. And yeah. it happens all the time. You see just the water. Yeah. We're drinking here. And I mean, how long time is going to be in your body, yeah. you know? <laughs> when is it leaving you again? And when yeah. we go to a sauna, it's going to be very <laughs> shortly from now. You're going to you're gonna let go. And also to understand that what water is, is that what you're most of in, in this body. Yeah. And how fast it comes. Yeah, that is what you're most of. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's like a cucumber almost. <laughs> it's like a cucumber. 70%. Exactly. Yeah. So you can ask yourself that mm. question. Is the water you? Or is it yours? Or is it something you're borrowing? And it's just coming in from a glass and, uh, and shortly you're yeah. letting go again. Of course, we have a lot of chemistry here also. And it's beautiful. But we're also borrowing that from Mother Earth. Is yeah. it your chemistry? Yeah, good question. Yeah. <laughs> Is it your chemistry? It's no. true, yeah. Is yeah. it your chemistry? Are we just boring it? It means thought and emotion, energy, mm. water. I'm now, of course, we are condensing a lot of your teachings into one small podcast. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so what you're teaching here is what you you can learn if you will go on one of your retreats, exactly. we'll which is usually four days yes. where you meditate and go Opening into a sauna, up. open up and doing it. Yeah. So, um, so if you feel intrigued, uh, yeah. you do many retreats yes. uh, all year round. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Every fourteen days, we're yeah. having retreats. Wonderful. I mean, I've been on several retreats, and it's mm. absolutely wonderful. Thank yeah. you. I love to do them. <laughs> yeah. I really love to do them. Um, but uh, you do not do a trauma therapy one on one anymore, right? No. You, you just do the meditation school, and the, then the retreats. Exactly. Yeah. I do just the retreat. And I would like to say also why, because people yes. say, well, how can you do that? Nobody heard about that before. <laughs> but, but for me, um, you see, it's it's easy for me to solve the trauma with another person. Mm. And I would say, if somebody is really in need, I will do it. Yeah. But but don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I will look into it, but we'll see, because yeah. a lot of people are asking me to do yeah. trauma therapy. And it's tough for me to say no. Yeah. But... The reason why is I, I at some point so it was so easy for me to become the fixer, mm. the one you go to to get yeah. fixed. I'm, I would rather teach people to do it themselves. Yeah. Exactly. So if something happened with me saying, wow, I can do this for the rest of my life, of course, but wouldn't it be beautiful if I taught a lot of people to yeah. do that with themselves, by themselves, being that uh, example so they would show it in the world mm. how to do it. And that, for me, is a much bigger impact than yeah. me sitting alone with one person. You reach way more people. More, maybe, yeah. And this is what, my, and also what I have seen yeah. where I'm going. This is what we need to do. Yeah. So it's also following yeah. the plan, like buying this swimming when there was mouse all over nothing here you see this I need it's to part go. of the plan it's part of the plan i need to do it and to be honest like uh, there are quite a lot of incredible science that is showing how group therapy works a mm. lot better mm. so that with opening up in a group um so much more. To, and you experience this tr tr as well right i am yeah. indeed because people tribe that way around yeah. they will open up like a tribe heart energy yeah so it does and this is what we need to have into society that heart open energy yeah. that tribe energy coming back where we're coming from actually. where it's okay to be vulnerable exactly show. showing your yeah. vulnerability yeah. showing this is how it is this is who i am right mm. now and then people are embracing that and giving them a tool how to do that keeping contact with consciousness yeah. you see this is what it's all about just breathe just look at that breath just embrace that space be that space mm. And here the healing is. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And this is much more uh, the way we're going as society to, to hold each other. Yeah. Because that's what tribes does. It yeah. holds each other back yeah, and opens back. up the heart. Yeah. It's beautiful. So. so, yes, but now we've been talking about your early years and yeah. 
how you you had your spiritual awakening and mm -hmm. entered into the path and started mm -hmm. teaching meditation, trauma therapy, the retreats. Mm -hmm. So how would you summarize your purpose here on, on this earth? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we're already reaching a little bit yeah, into we it. Did, we yeah, did, yeah. yeah, because it's, um, you see, I'm just following me. Yeah. What I was taught at that. Uh, but you see, <laughs> I, I would say that it's back. I was 17. I would say it's not really that. It's It happened now. And this is probably the most great thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> If you believe in time. We've been saying a lot of crazy things. I know, so. So, but it's it's that tapping into this present moment yeah. um, and knowing what it is. So all the time it it happened there, but it's also happening now. It's the same. Yeah. So there's no time distance for me in that. Like I said, it could be 200 years. It should also be a split of a second because it was now. Yeah. And all the time, I just have that ability to, to really go deep into that now. Mm. And when that happens, there is a, it's like silence is guiding me. It's like the space itself is guiding me. Unfolding what is there for my path to mm. walk. And I don't really have any question for it. I see it and I do it. Yeah. Because this is, there's a knowing appearing and in that knowing you just know there's yeah. no questioning anymore do you think it would be easier for most people to follow their path and find their purpose if they listened more yes you see yeah. that's what it's all about it's yeah. not what what you want it's what you can do it's what you can do yeah and this is there already yeah it's in the seat yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's there already so you just need yeah. to listen to it yeah. to 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 lean into it as it is and there the guiding is and there you just need to be really brave sometimes mm. to unfold it yeah. and this is also why i put people into sweat lodges and really do brave stuff with people so they really get brave so we'll, what they need to do for themselves to get an alignment with who they are in this present moment they will be brave enough to do yeah you see And of course, you, it's just also stop listening to a lot of people because you start to listen to yourself. Yeah. And there is, and this is when the world is becoming beautiful, when we can do that. Listen more. Yeah, listen yeah. more to ourselves mm, instead of listening ourselves, yeah. so much to other to people. To other people's truth. Yes, yeah. yes. Because you see, all of us is so different, you know. Yeah. So we're not seeing the world uh, as it is, but we're seeing the world how we are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, that's also something that, that we know from science, that we are blind in, to, to certain things and certain aspects of the world. Mm -hmm. And we're even blind to this blindness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is yeah. where it becomes really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, Jesper, um, now um, we've been talking about sort of your life's work uh, in a very short time. Yeah. Um, and uh, this year, I'm actually, I would like to congratulate you because you're rounding a very nice corner you're yes. turning uh, 50 this Fif july 50 this body is, yeah. is, is going to be 50, <laughs> 50. years old yeah i mean uh, that's not you can't really see it um, <laughs> oh, you definitely thank you. Just, oh, oh my <laughs> have God. the joy yeah. of a child yeah which is yeah beautiful. i still i am still that <laughs> child mm. yeah i still am yeah. how are you going to celebrate it it's uh, It's probably gonna be me and my son going out in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you see, I do a lot of practice in the forest, and I'm starting to bring my son with me out in the forest on these uh, um, trips mm -hmm. and surrendering to Mother Earth and surviving out there. And it gives me a really. Uh, it puts me into a balance mm. and getting me to know who I am even deeper and deeper mm. every time I do these things. And of course, I'm not totally in isolation when I go there with my son. Yeah. Uh, but How old is your son? He is, uh, he, you know, we have a birthday at the same time. Yeah. And uh, nearly it's like 14 days in between us. So he's turning 11. Okay. And yeah. I'm turning 50. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Incredible that he likes to come with you to the forest. Oh yeah, he yeah. likes that. Uh, we do all kind of uh, nature stuff, and, and and of course we have to catch uh, food. Yeah, and uh, he really likes that. Yeah, yeah. So just uh, to round this up, I, I know that you go into the forest alone as, as well. Yeah. How how long will you go to the forest for? Oh, with him it's only like three days. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah. you go alone. When I go alone, uh, if, uh, it's like normally it's 14 days, but I'll definitely easy do more than a month. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I've done that a couple of times yeah. now, and uh, I really like that, mm. that uh, isolation. See, for me, there's so much that knowledge about who we are when we're taking away everything and all that reflection coming from the mirror neurons and all that contact with other people. And there you really... They have layers of layers of layers put off, so you see your real sense of who you are. And I like to become that little child, mm -hmm. and because this is what I'm ending up with all the time, just being that little boy. When you can't reflect yourself in yes. other people, yes, or I, they can't reflect themselves in you. It's mm. true. I'm just becoming that little boy, yeah. and to be there with my son, you know, and and, and being boy with him. Yeah. We're just playing, actually. It's fun. Sounds like a wonderful way to celebrate. I think so. Mm. That's what it's going to be, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. With uh, also these decades of beautiful work helping people out to thank find you. their way. So Thank you. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time to be on this podcast. Of um, course. To, Anytime for to you. To spread you. your knowledge. Uh, also for to you. the English speakers. Yes, yeah. exactly. This is actually the first uh, podcast I'm doing in English. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. Thank and you. I know that you sometimes do retreats in English as I well, do. so it's possible to join a retreat. Of course. I have, yeah. I have like three or four years, four, I think. Yeah. yeah. I'll be in English, and then of course I have some in the foreign countries like Ibiza, yeah. Bhutan, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Also. So you can, um, I'll link to uh, your sites for Thank anyone for who is interested. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So um, I would love for you to end this podcast mm. with a small guided meditation so we can sort of again arrive in presence if we got lost in all the beautiful words it's true yeah, <laughs> it, could, it, yeah. Will, it could it could happen so, it could happen yeah so let's end the way we started yeah so it's a nice round way of coming back yeah so yeah just have that focus point there in front of you so there's some spot you can look at for me it's just looking into <sighs> to this area right here and then take a deep breath Close your eyes and put all of that attention you had there and that focus in towards your body. Just really embrace, allow, and just listen to the sounds passing by. Maybe it's your own breath. Maybe it's this voice, maybe you have un other voices around you passing by. Maybe you're looking at the breath passing by, it could be that cold wind in the nose, breathing in, shoulder to your stomach, gravity, letting go, stomach, chest, shoulder, exhale, warm air, in the nose. Fully exhaling, and there, beautiful thing with life. Cold breath is coming in the nose, shoulder, chest, stomach. And just really to acknowledge how peaceful it is to sit here with your breath and the trust you have. Is this trust? Just feel safe here in the body. I'm safe, I'm trusting there in the breath. That trust you have to the body is breathing when you are the observer. Maybe some thoughts are passing by, so the same there, sounds, wind in the nose. Some thoughts passing by. 
Ich weiß nicht, ob ich sage. Ich weiß nicht, ob ich sage, in der Bahn. Ich sage, in der Bahn. Ich lebe in Gott. 